We give honor, praise, and glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords on this great day of worship. Truly, we serve a mighty God, and his name is Jesus. And if you haven't said Jesus' name all week, uh, this is a great time right now to proclaim his name at the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Powers in the name of Jesus. So we want to greet you this evening. Pray and trust that all is well, all is going well in your life, and, and truly that the Lord, I, believe, I pray that the Lord is blessing you real good. We're in Wednesday night Bible study for the believer. Wednesday night's always a great time for us to grow up in truth, um, to be engaged in truth, to, to, to mature in truth, uh, and to be conforming to the image of Christ for the believer in these latter days is that we should mo look more like Jesus. Amen. And so we want to begin tonight um, um, looking at this study. In these days that we're living in, we're living in, in, the, in the days of malicious crimes, and we're living in the days of hatred. Uh, we're living in the days of hostility, so much hostility in this world. Uh, so much is going on in this world, so much injustice in this world, um, racial divides, um, unmitigated evil. Uh, we're, we're, we're living in a time that some of us have never experienced before of unmitigated evils, amen, wars and rumors of war, and the increase of wickedness. The increase of wickedness, it, you just turn on the news every day, Every day, uh, murders. Every day, every day, the increase of wickedness. Uh, we're definitely um, living in some terrible times for our nation, amen, in the U.S. of A. But there is still a requirement. There is still a requirement. I want you to grow from this today. There is still a requirement from God uh, uh, through Christ to every believer. Even though we're living in these days that we see so much um, um, wickedness and things, evilness, God still has a requirement for the believer, amen? And every believer is called and commanded by God to impact this world. In the midst of all that we see going on, we are called and committed to impact this world. We are commanded to be light, amen? To be light in, in our cities, to be light in our community, amen, to be light in our relationship. And so we want to go back and we want to look at a lesson, uh, the, the question that kicks off a quick reminder, this is, a, this is a, a quick lesson for us on Wednesday night, a quick, a quick reminder of what uh, God has called us to do and to be. And, and we have a quick a question. As a Christian, a born-again believer, what is my duty in the community? Because we're forgetting about this. Uh, we, we have a lot of religion, a lot of church, but what is our duty as a believer in Christ in our community, in our society, amen? And there should be uh, distinguishing characters, uh, characteristics, I should say. We should have a distinguishing character traits uh, uh, and, and also show forth our actions that set us apart from the pattern of this world, amen? As a believer, there should be distinct character traits that should be setting us apart um, from what we see in the world today. And don't forget, we've been placed here for a purpose and a reason. Amen. The New Testament church is here for a purpose and a reason, and that is to impact this world. So in our, in our friendships, in our, in our contacts, in our business affairs, in our, in our, in our neighborhoods, amen, the folks that we are connected with, the folks that we uh, are connected to outside of church. Watch this. I ain't talking about our, our church friends and our church contacts. I'm talking about outside of church. Amen. That's the call. Amen. That's what God has called us to. He's called us uh, to impact people outside of church. And this is important to God. As not only is it important to God, amen, but this is uh, the life that he's given us. So let's get started. As a Christian, the question is on the floor Wednesday night, and I want you to think about this. Uh, what is my duty in the community? What is my duty in my neighborhood? What is my duty on my job? What is my duty in society? And the first thing I want us to look at is, is understanding this first point tonight. Our reputation is key. We're forgetting about this. Our reputation of who we are in Christ is key 
uh, to impact in this world. Our reputation, reputation means so much, amen? And our reputation is key, amen? Look at the example. We, we've, we've looked at the example many times before of Jesus, amen? Uh, the God-man, amen? The God-man. And it says in, in Luke 2, verses 52, it says, as he grew up as a young boy, right? It says that Jesus grew in wisdom and in statue. Watch this. It's always been the key. He, he grew in favor with God, with the almighty God, but also with man. And that's the key. And I think this is a great starting point for us tonight. Amen. Because we're forgetting about this. Our reputation is the key. Amen. And we look at our Savior, Jesus. He grew in favor, favor with God. Amen. A lot of folks want to be in favor with God. But they said, well, I ain't worrying about man. But it says, it shows forth that Jesus grew in favor with God and man. Amen. And man. And we also, if you ever get a chance, you go back and study in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 2, verse 26, it records the same thing. It says about the prophet Samuel. It says that Samuel, same as Jesus, he grew in wisdom and statue in favor with God and man. He's God's, he's God's servant, amen? God's servant, uh, the, the prophet Samuel, also grew uh, in, in wisdom and in statue in favor with God and man. So we see that reputation means so much and 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 church we got to get back to this we got to get back to how we're called to impact this world and 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 resemble christ amen and so walk with me don't forget this as a christian as a born again believers uh, as born again believers we are pilgrims we're sojourners that's an old word amen pilgrims sojourners uh uh in this world that means we're in this world but we're not here to stay amen we're just passing through we've heard the the old folks always say i'm just passing through this little land of sorrow amen we're just passing through but as we're passing through i want you to grab this tonight as we're passing through we're sojourners and we know that our eternal home we just taught a whole um series on our heavenly home is with the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we've been called to occupy an impact. So we have two duties. There's two duties for the Christian. And I want you to see it tonight. Two duties. The first, we have a duty regarding, we have a duty regarding our spiritual growth. Amen. And development. We all should be growing up. We all should be maturing in Christ. Nobody should be the same place you was last year uh, or, or last month. We all should be uh, growing up in Christ. Matter of fact, 1 Peter 2.11 tells us this. It says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims. It says here, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against your soul. What, is, what, what Peter is recording here is that, watch this, we should be growing up in our spiritual growth. We shouldn't be living the same way we used to live, amen. We should be abstaining from the things that, that come up against us in our flesh, amen. We should be growing up in our walk with Christ. So we see one of the first things is development. We should be growing as a believer. That's a duty for all believers. All believers should be growing up in the faith, amen. No believer should be at the same place. We should be growing up in our faith. But the second thing is what we want to look at, the second duty. Uh, yet not only should we be growing up and developing in our faith, but we also have a duty, watch this, and this is key tonight. We have a duty towards those in the world. We have a duty towards those in the world, those who are in the community those who are in our cities, amen, those who we come in contact with, those that we work with, those that we associate with, amen, those who are on the outside, amen, those who are on the outside. We have a duty. Look what it says. If you go down, it says in 2 Peter 2.12, after he talks about the duty of spiritual growth, he says, and keep your conduct among the Gentiles, amen, keep your conduct among those outside. Outside uh, the ark of safety, outside the faith, amen? Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evil, uh, uh, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Did you see that? So we have a responsibility, a duty to those on the outside. And I want you to understand this. I want you to get this. Christ has placed us here, uh, amen, to, to, to impact the world, amen? The Christian is still here. The church is still here to impact the world. Amen. And so it, we have, it's our, in our conduct. It should be honorable. Our conduct should be honorable among the Gentiles, 
among those who are outside um, um, the ark of safety, outside the faith. Amen. We're not just talking about with church folks. We're talking about those who aren't church folks. Amen. And so as we look at this and understand this, understand our responsibility, walk with me and look at this real quick. Check out our faith should be impacting our community. Your faith, my faith should be impacting our community. What we believe should be impacting our community. I, I remember when my children played park and rec sports when they were, when they were young. They're adults now, but when they were young, and our, and our family, we had to interface with so many different families when our children played park and rec, amen? We was always interfacing with a lot of different families from a lot of different backgrounds and cultures and things of that nature. But, but my wife and I, we made sure that our faith in Christ, we made sure that our faith in Christ was always on display when we were dealing with those on the outside, amen? When we are dealing with those on the outside, we ain't just talking about church folks, we made sure that our faith in Jesus Christ was on display so that the folks that we interface with, they knew one thing about the Websters, not that we were perfect, but they knew one thing, they knew that we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was displayed in our actions, amen? And that's what the call is for all of us. How do we impact the community? Amen. We are to call to impact the community. Watch this. And so when they were acting up or doing crazy stuff, we didn't do crazy stuff. We didn't get caught up in that. But we, we shared forth the light of Christ in the midst of the community, in the midst of those folks that we interface with. And that's the call. That's the call. And we're getting away from that. Amen. We're starting to blend and look just like, just like the world, just like the culture that God has called us to impact. Amen. And so as we look at this, check out some guidelines. Let's look at some guidelines tonight. Basic teaching. Look at some guidelines of how we are, we have a duty in our community and how do we model out this duty of impacting in our community. Amen. And the first thing I want you to look at is the Apostle Paul, he gives, he gives general instructions. The Apostle Paul gives general instructions concerning Christians living in this world. He gives us what we need uh, general instructions, guidelines for living in this world. Don't forget how this world is right now, but don't forget that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Don't forget we're, we're the light of the world because the light of Christ lives in us, and we are been called, watch this, get this, more than so just to have church on Sunday, but we've been called to penetrate the darkness. We've been called to penetrate the darkness. That's why, that's why you woke up this morning. That's why you're still here today, amen? Because God still has a, a duty for you to penetrate the darkness. So look what Paul says. He says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12, he says this, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly, here we go, that you may walk properly towards those who are outside. Outside what? Outside of the faith, in the world, the community, the city, amen? That you may walk properly, that they may lack nothing, amen? Amen? Those who are on the outside, they may see it. That's how we're to operate. Did you get this? I want you to get this tonight. He says, watch this, he says, lead a quiet life. Amen. Don't be in the center of controversy or, or chaos. Amen. Don't be in the middle of chaos and controversy. Don't be in the center of controversy and chaos. He says, work with your own hands. Don't cheat or lie or steal. Earn your own bread. Amen. Earn your own bread. Amen. He says, he says mind your business. How we are to operate in this. He says, mind your business. Amen. Don't be a busybody. Don't be in the midst of everybody else's business and household. Amen. Uh, don't don't get caught up in that. And then this is what we want to focus on. He says, walk properly. Walk properly. Look at the instructions that the Apostle Paul gives the Christian in duty. He says, walk properly towards those who are on the outside. Those who are outside the realm of faith. Because this is who we are supposed to be impacting. Amen. He says, lead. What he's saying is, our lives, we should be leading a blameless life. Amen. And so the focus is this. How to walk properly. How do we walk properly uh, towards those who are outside? How do we model this out? Amen. And so as we look at this, let's identify. How do we model this out? How do we walk properly? Because that's the focus. 
How do we do it? Because we're talking about our duty. Uh, what is our duty while still on this earth? Amen? To impact. How do we do that? Well, we do it as we focus. The first thing is, is the Christian as a neighbor. Amen? We are neighbors. We are to impact our neighbors. Amen? Uh, your neighbor is everyone. Amen? Your neighbor is everyone. Amen? Your neighbor is everyone. And so watch this. Uh, we, we, we can't keep living these isolated lives. It's sad how, uh, how believers don't even know who their neighbors are. Amen? We don't even interface with our neighbors to the right, to the left, across the street, uh, behind us. We don't even impact, even in the community. Amen? Uh, we're not even impacting those in the community. And it's sad to say that we don't even know who our neighbors are. Amen? And we should, amen? And we have to associate, watch this, we have to, as believers, associate with others. Associate with other people, amen? He's not just talking about those who are just within the household of faith. We got to be able to associate with everyone. We got to be able to interface with everybody and make impact with all types of people, amen? Listen, don't get me wrong, there are boundaries. Don't get me wrong. We know the Bible speaks of boundaries and the Bible gives us about separation, amen? Uh, with a, a familiar text that tells us this is over in 2nd um, uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. We've, we've read it many times. You should be familiar with this. It says, do not be unequally yoked up together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness? He shows the contrast between the believer and the unbeliever, right? And what, 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 uh, what accord has Christ with Bilal, uh, the, the God of the dumb, amen? What does Christ have with demons, amen? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Watch this. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, we see the separation. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And what, what Paul is referring to here, watch this. we got to be very careful that we don't get this twisted. He's talking about deep covenantal relationships. He's talking about, watch this, he's talking about marrying unbelievers. He's talking about intimate relationship with, with, with darkness, with unbelievers. Paul speaks against developing, developing these intimate relationships with unsaved peoples, amen, that's able with the potential of influencing us, amen, to turning us away from the true and living God or turning us away from the faithful, from God's word, amen. But, but he's not talking about, watch this, don't confuse separation with isolation because he's not promoting isolation. He's, he's not promoting isolation because, watch this, we're in the world, but we're not of this world. And you have to interface with people, and that's why we're here. That's why the church is here. And so watch this. Another familiar text he, he gives us is in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. I want you to listen very closely because I want you to see the difference between uh, the separation but not isolation and he's talking about watch this he's talking about developing deep intimate relationships we got some folks got deep intimate relationship with the unsaved but don't have deep intimate relationship with the saved amen that's a, that's a that's a no-no right but look what he says here he says here in first corinthians 5 uh, verses 9 through 13 and i wrote you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people wow watch this Yet I certainly did not mean the sexually immoral people of this world. You got to watch what he says here of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters. Since then, you, you would need to go out of the world. He says, oh, you understand. I'm not talking about interfacing with these folks of the world. You, you have to go out of the world for that. No, he says, but now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother. He's talking about those who, who have given their life to Christ, profess Christ, but they're living this lifestyle like the unsaved, amen? That's what he's dealing with, that you, there should be a separation. Watch this. 
who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reveler or a drunkard or extortion and not even to eat with such a person. I know this is hard truth for, for some of us because, you know, our friends are our friends. You know, even if God says his word says one thing, but, you know, we're going to go by what we decide anyway. For, for what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? He says those who are outside are outside. Do not judge those who are, do you not judge those who are inside? He said, watch this, the, the ones on the outside are judged. He said, but we are to judge the ones on the inside. But those who are outside, God judges. Did you get that? I want you to just sit there and look at that scripture for a minute. Look at the contrast he says here. Amen? Because he's not promoting a separation as isolation because we're in the world. You work with unsaved people. Amen? You got unsaved people in your family. Amen? You, you, you Association, you, uh, your children's friends and, and parents, you got unsaved people. So he's not talking about that. Amen? And so we have to understand what he is saying here. Watch this. How could we ever share the love? How can you ever share the true love and salvation of Christ uh, 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 to, to the unsaved if you don't interface with them. Amen. The reason the church is left on the earth is to do what? Is to reflect Christ. So we're looking at this. Watch this. Check out, check out Jesus. Check out how Jesus dealt with this principle right here. Look at Jesus, the example in Mark uh, uh, chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. What are we talking about? How, we in, how do we impact the community? Those on the outside. Look, as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened, as he was dining in Levi's house, that many, watch this, here we go, the outside, those outside of faith, many uh, tax collectors, we know they were scoundrels, amen, cheating folks, extorting money, right? Uh, tax collectors and sinners also sit together with Jesus and his disciples. Watch this. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes, when the religious leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and the sinners, they said to his disciples, how is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? How is he interfacing with these ungodly people of the world, right? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well, no need a doctor. Those who are well, they don't need no physician. Here we go. This is a great principle, uh, a class, great principle. But those who are sick, those who are sick, I did not come to, to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The whole point is not to compromise, but to sprinkle and to impact. Because the bottom line, watch this, the bottom line is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what Jesus is saying here, I've come for those who are sick, who need a savior. And so watch this, he left us on the face of the earth that we should be able to sprinkle the gospel, the love of Christ to those who stand in need of salvation. Amen. That's the most important thing in the world. And guess what, church? I'll be honest with you. We've forgotten about that. We've forgotten all about our purpose on the earth. Amen. And so as we look at this, our duty is to impact the community. But not only that, our duty is to live in peace with the community. Here we go. Our duty is to live in peace with the community. This is how we reflect Christ. Amen. The, these new reality shows, um, there's something if you watch them. I don't watch them, um, but I just see the gist of them. Um, they, mis they misrepresent God's kingdom. A lot of them do, uh, especially the ones of our culture. Amen. Uh, folks on the show are supposed to be believers. Uh, they'll talk Jesus. Uh, they'll talk about church. Amen. Supposed to be believers in Christ. But, they're, but if you notice, they're at war with each other on some of these reality shows. They're fighting, they're cussing, um, they're plotting against each other, they're holding grudges, they're being divisive, amen? Uh, uh, but the duty for the Christian, watch this, the duty for the child of God is to promote peace. We, we forget about that. Our job is to promote peace, amen? That's the job for the believer, amen? Because, watch this, because our God is a God of peace, Amen. He is the God of peace. Amen. The Bible tells us he's the God of peace. He's the very personification of peace. Amen. And Jesus reveals uh, the kingdom trait, uh, the kingdom of God trait for all believers. Jesus says, this is not on the screen, write it down somewhere. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 9, as he gives uh, the traits for kingdom people, he gives a trait for kingdom people. 
He says this, he says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called, here we go, the sons of God. So watch this, if we are the sons of God, then we should be peacemakers. If we belong to the Lord, we should be peacemakers. And guess what? That's why society needs us, because we are the ones who are to live in peace amongst our neighbors and in our communities and in our cities. Amen. Our duty, watch this, is to pursue peace. That's our duty. We are to pursue levels of peace. We're in our relationships, in our community, in our city. Catch this. This is what God has called us to. Amen. With all people. Not just with church folks, we're to pursue peace with all people. You say, well, Pastor, where you get that from? Well, I get that from the Bible. I get that from being a kingdom trait of being a kingdom kid. Amen. Watch this. He says this. He says in, 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 in Romans 12, 17 through 18, he says, repay no one evil for evil. This is a great principle I learned when I first got saved. Amen. I had to uh, put this in my heart. Repay no one evil for evil. I have regard for good things in the sight of all. Have regards for good things in the sight of all men. Did you see that? That's your neighbor. That's the unsaved. That's all men. Amen. And if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, the believer, live peaceably. Here we go. With some men? No, with all men. Here we go. This is how we, this is how we impact uh, the darkness, penetrate the darkness. The believer is living with peace. Just think if we saw more peace from the believer in our society, amen? As much as it depends upon, watch this, us. God puts the burden back on his children. He put the burden back on the believer that, watch this, you and I should be pursuing peace, Establishing different levels of peace with all men, not wars, amen, not, not, not hatred, not fights. We should be establishing peace with all men. Did you get that? See, we're getting away from our character, uh, uh, our Christian character. We're getting away from what is so important to God, amen. We're getting away from our duty as believers, amen. Look what he says here, and be careful. Watch this, let me add something. And he says, be careful to give no offense if possible. Don't get, don't, uh, don't go around starting stuff. Amen. We got a lot of folks love this, in the body, love to start stuff. Amen. Looking for trouble. Don't go around looking for trouble. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians 10, 32 and 33. Give no offense either to the Jew or to the Greek. He's covering all men, all, to the Jew or to the Greek, or to the church of God. Amen. Even to the church of God. So he covers all men, and then he even covers the believers. Amen. Just as I also please all men. That's the goal. To please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may, watch this, that they may be saved. Watch this. We do what we do to seek peace because guess what? The bottom line is that we want to see people saved. Did you get that tonight? Amen. The question is, what is my duty? What is my duty as a Christian in the community? It's to live in peace. That's our duty is to live in peace. The scriptures get lost. We, we, this scripture get lost in, in religion. It get, it get lost in, in showmanship of church. It get lost in antics. It get lost in tradition. Uh, this is how we're to live as Christians. Amen, period. Amen. This is what pleases God. What pleases, what pleases God is when we display his characteristics in the community. But not only that, our duty in the community is also to do something else. Our duty in the community, Rooted Bible Fellowship Church, is to walk in love and wisdom with all men, amen? With all men, amen? This is a hard truth, amen? Hard truth. We, we are to do something, and, and it's hard because this world is promoting something different. This world is trying to make us hard. It's trying to make us hard. It's trying to make us hard. And, and this world is trying to make the church just like it. Amen. That we are not like our savior, but we're more like the world. We're a, a hard truth is, is, is that we are to love our neighbors. That's, a, that's reality. We are to love our neighbors. We, we, we owe it to. We owe it to our neighbors. Watch this. Hold on. Put the burden back on us as believers. We owe it to our neighbors to love them. Mm, mm, mm. Here we go. Look what he says in Romans 13, verses 8 and 10. Owe no one anything 
except to love one another. That's what we owe. You want a debt? I ain't talking about a credit card debt. No, what we owe is to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandment, here we go. You don't do these things when you love somebody. You don't do these things. Uh, we're God's children, amen? You don't commit adultery. You don't, you don't murder. Here we go. Here we go. You, you, you don't steal. You don't, bear, you don't lie, bear false witness. You shall not covet, uh, covet somebody else's stuff. Uh, if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in the same, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is it right here. Amen. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfillment of the law. Did you see this? So he says that we are to, how do we, what is our duty? To love our neighbor. And that's, it seems like it's hard, but you can only do this in the spirit. You do this in the power of the Holy Spirit, amen, to love your neighbor, amen. It's a, it's a work. It's a work, amen. And so watch this. Let me add one more. He says in Colossians 4, 5 through 6, walk in wisdom towards those who are where? On the outside. Those who are outside. We ain't talking about church. We ain't talking about those who name the name. We don't talk about the outside. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. Redeeming the time. Let your speech also be grace seasoned with salt that they may know uh, how you ought to answer each one on the outside, your speech. Don't let your speech portray your profession. Amen. Don't let your speech mess you up that portray that, that goes against your profession of faith. Amen. Uh, you ought to speak truth and speak grace. And, 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 and these are the things that we ought to do. He says, therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth to who? To his neighbor. What are we talking about? We're talking about our duty tonight. What is the Christian's duty? This is our duty. Amen? We're to speak truth. Amen? This is how we are to penetrate the darkness. Amen? This is our purpose. Amen? Let me, let me give you these last couple ones as we're just looking at our duty. We, we got to get back to our duty. We see so much going on in the world, but we got to understand what is our duty. What is our duty? Even though we see chaos all around us. But what is the duty? The duty is for us to be light and salt. Look what he says here. He says this, to do good. To do good, that is our duty as believers, to do good. I don't care what's going on in the world. world is going to hell in a handbasket, but watch this. The believer is to do good. That's how we impact. That's, how, that's our duty. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Your good works. And by seeing your good works, your actions, your conduct, Amen. Your godliness. Amen. That they may glorify your father in heaven. This is what changes. This is what changes cities. This is what changes communities. This is what changes uh, your neighborhood. They talk about all these things. Nothing changes until the heart changes. Amen. And so get this class. Paul sums up our duty. He sums up our duty as neighbors. Amen. He sums it up. And then he begins to touch on our duty as Christians, amen? As Christians, as, 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 as citizens. He, 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 he sums up our duties as neighbors, but then he's getting ready to touch on our duties as citizens, amen? That should be citizens, amen? Watch this, look what he says in Titus 3, verses one through two. He says, remind them to be subject, here we go. He says, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil, here we go, to speak evil of no one. To be peaceable, back what we just said, gentle, showing all humility to all men. Here we go to that word again, all men. Look at, look at us as, not only as our, towards our neighbor, but also as a citizen. Amen? There's millions upon millions of professing Christians in the U.S. Can you imagine all the folks in the United States they have professed that they've given their life to Jesus Christ. Can you, just millions upon millions, just think, just think of all those millions of Christians lived out their duty on this world. Just think of all those millions upon millions of Christians that lived out their duty of what we're ta um, teaching today in the world that would turn the tide in our society. That would turn the tide. That would turn society around if all the believers that profess Christ would live out their duty, amen? Amen. Let's not forget, since we are sojourners and pilgrims, we must also, watch this, be good and godly citizens. 
uh, that's a foreign word now. You're a citizen. You're still here. Amen. You're still here for this time that God has you here. Amen. He has set you apart for this time, and you, are, and you and I have been called to be citizens, ambassadors for him as we sojourn. Amen. And so with that, he's called us to be good citizens, to be Christian citizens. Amen. We can't forget that. Sometimes we separate that. Amen. Uh, we separate that. So we must obey. What do we obey? We must obey those in authority. I know that's a foreign word. That's a foreign word. Amen. But God commands us while we're sojourning, while we're sojourning in this land to obey all different levels of authority. Look what he says in Romans 13.1. He said, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Goodness, God is sovereign, church. Amen. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Get that in your heart and mind. Stop getting caught up with man. Understand that God is sovereign. He supersedes all this. The, the, look, he says this. See, the, the release is this. The release when you and I ain't got to obey authority is, is when the law or the authority that institute the law or, or whatever it may be, whatever comes first, conflicts or go against God's law. See, when it goes against God's law, then you're right. You are released from falling under that authority. You're released. We just preached some of this on Sunday about giving in church when, 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 um, the, when the leadership is not is living in gross sin or the word of God is not being preached. Amen. You're released. Amen. And so there's a release. Amen. There's a release. And so we have to understand this, that there's a release when, they, when it conflicts with God's law. For example, same-sex marriage. There's a release. Amen. Because it conflicts with God's law, um, transgender issues. It's a release. Abortion. It's a release. Amen. Love the purple. Love the person. Or love the people. Hate the sin and don't compromise at all from what God says about it. Amen. And so we see that there's a release from these things. But for the most part, citizens, Christian citizens, are to obey the authority. Look what it says in First Peter. You can't get away from scriptures. You may try, but look at it says in 1 Peter 2, 13 and 16. For the Lord's sake. Oh, Lord have mercy. For the Lord's sake. For the Lord's sake. Submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials has appointed. For the king has set them to punish those who do wrong and honor those who do right. It is God's will. That your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. Amen. He goes on to talk about this, right? You give honor to whom honor is due. So as we look at this, our duty is to be good citizens in this, in this land that God has placed us in for this short period of time. Amen. Let me give you one more. And of course, we got to do this. And of course, you do what the law mandates. Pay your taxes. Uh, 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 um. Uh, your obligations of the customs that the world has put in place. Amen. It says here in Romans 13, verses 6 through 7, for because of this, you also pay taxes. For they are God's minister. Attending, did you hear that? They're God ministers. Attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Jesus says, you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Jesus said this, and you give to God what belongs to God. Customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. So as we look at this, our duty is to be good citizens. What's hard with this? Because we're ambassadors. We're in a foreign land, amen? And he's called us to rep represent him in a foreign land. So while we're in this land, he says to be good citizens in this land. Not only that, we're to pray for those in authority, amen? Amen? Not only the folks that we like, amen? Uh, but we ought to pray for those even sometimes that we don't like, amen? He said to pray, amen? And only, the, only the, the children of God can get through to God, amen? Only the children that belong to Jesus can pray and get a breakthrough, amen? And he says, therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for, here we go, for all men, all men. You're praying for saved, unsaved. You're praying for all men, amen? For kings and all who are in authority that they may, may lead a quiet life, peaceable life and godliness and reverence. All men, all kings, 
all presidents, presidents, if you like them or even if you don't like them. This is the call for the Christian that you pray for all in authority. Amen. Those in authority. Amen. We keep fighting against what God says. God is the one who turns the heart like a water course. God is the one who establishes kings and, and, and presidents. and that. It's God's business. It's all part of his plan. He says, the only thing I need you to do is be a good citizen. You pray for him. Amen. You pray for him. That's what you do. Amen. And so the world is trying to condition folks to hate and to rebel against authority. That's the world uh, that you don't need nobody telling you, no authority over you, all forms of authority. But that shouldn't be so for the Christian. Amen. No, we, that shouldn't be so for us, the believer. Amen. And so we see it in Scripture. This is our duty. Let me come down to the end. Get this. The Christian is the most valuable asset to any community. Man, if you get a community or a city filled up with Christians, it's the most valuable asset to any neighborhood, on your neighborhood. I don't care if it's only a couple homes on your street, amen? You are a viable asset to that community. You are a viable asset to the city, to the state, to the nation, amen? And I'm gonna close with this, because I want you to understand this. A, not only in our character are we valuable, not only in our citizenship, but most importantly, this is how we're valuable in our evangelizing. <laughs> because guess what? We're holding out the word of life. We're holding out truth. That's what makes us so valuable. Amen? Because guess what? We are holding out the gospel to see people get saved. We're, man, church, we got to get back to that. We got to get back to wanting to see people get saved. And 1 Timothy 2, 4, and 6, it tells us that the desire of God is that, that people get saved, that men be saved. And that should be our desire. That should be our desire. Amen? Not to have our way. We're doing ministries and all this other stuff. But the, qu the question is, do we have a desire to want to see people get saved? Amen. We're going to church and singing in choir and preaching messages and, and, and going to conferences and all that. Uh, that's fine and dandy. But do we have a desire to want to see people saved? We are valuable because we're holding out the word of life. Amen. The good news. Amen. The gospel. Amen. And, and because of that, we are valuable. Amen. And so watch. Let's close it out with this. Let's close out with the last important um, 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 concept or, or, or responsibility, I should say, of our duty. We already looked at being a, a neighbor. We looked at being a citizen. Amen. Let's, let's close out by looking at, watch this, all of us. If you're saved tonight, all of us have been called to be an evangelist. We've all been called. It's not just, it wasn't just Billy Graham's responsibility. Uh, uh, amen. When he lived to be, an, all believers are called to be an evangelist. So the Christian as an evangelist. Amen. That's what we've been called to. We've been called to get this word out. Amen. Look what it says as we come down to the last two scriptures. It says in Philippians 2, 14 and 16, do all things without complaining and disputing. Please, we can get that. We'd be, we'd be halfway where we need to be. That you may become blameless, harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a, of a crooked and perverse generation. This is what we're living in right now. Amen. And among whom you shine as lights in this world. That's powerful. That's who we are. Amen. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Our duty is to hold fast the word of Christ. Amen. Every believer is an evangelist. Amen. In some translation, it says this. It says to hold out the word, the gospel. That's in your community. Amen. That's in your city. That's on your job. That's everywhere, amen? Uh, not just Sunday, amen, as a, as a Sunday member only, but to spread the word about Jesus in our community. This is where social change comes. I see all this thing about social change, um, social justice, social change. But watch this. Those things can never truly come if there's not a change of a regenerated heart. I'm going to tell you, you'll be fighting all day, amen, because one thing I know is that a spot can't, a leper can't change his spot, amen. He can't, he can't get rid of his spots, amen? Unless there's a change of heart, a regenerated heart that comes by way of the gospel, that's where the change is going to take place. That's where the impact is going to take place. The regenerated heart 
is produced change. Isn't that what happened in your life? Isn't that what happened in your life? Amen. And so as we look at this, we, we, we close with the soul duty, our soul duty. Jesus tells each Christian, each one of us in Mark 16, 15, he said to them, go into all the world. This is not common. This is not popular no more, but it's still the duty. It's still why the church is still here, still why you're still here, why you woke up this morning, not just to go out and make money, amen, uh, to live your life, but to go into all the world and preach the gospel uh, to some creatures, no, to every creature, amen? Look what it says. So let's close. Let's, let's challenge ourselves tonight on this Wednesday night Bible study. He looked at a few things, gave you some scriptures, looked at our duty. Let's challenge ourselves by, by, by two questions that we need to ask. Watch this. I need to ask myself, and then you need to ask yourself, amen? What kind of neighbor and citizen are you, amen? What kind of neighbor and citizen are you, amen? Ask yourself that question. Don't think about nobody else. Think about yourself. And then, and then secondly, uh, are we as Christians fulfilling our duty before God in our community, the things that he's called us to do? And it called us to be. That's the question we need to ask. And if not, it's time for us to get on board and do what God has called us to be. It's not too late. Amen. Let's turn this thing around. Because this is how we're going to see the world be impacted. This is how we're going to see the world get well by the Christian operating in the duty that God has commanded them to operate in. May God bless you. Maybe one here this evening that stands in the, in the way of eternal life. Eternal life comes our w one way, and it comes by way of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except by way of the Son. You must accept that Jesus, he is the propitiator for sin. He's the one who satisfied God's hot displeasure against sin. He's the one who laid down his life for the sin of man. Amen. And tonight, you can give your life to Jesus. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Save me right now. Amen. Be my Lord. Forgive me of my sins. And, and I accept you in my heart and to my life. And I want to live for you and serve you. And then after you said that, say, thank you, Lord. Believe by faith. Amen. Believe by faith that you have saved me. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart. Amen. Confess it. And today you will be a child of God. If you call, if you, if you did that, call that number on the screen. Let someone know that tonight you've given your life to Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you on, on Sunday. It's our youth explosion for our kids. We've got a great word, a great challenging word for our, our youth. And I want the youth to come out. I want you to get, bring your, your nephews, your grandchildren, your children out, uh, the children in the neighborhood, bring them out to get a challenging word that's going to meet them right where they are to meet in the time that they're living in. Amen. So come on out. We look forward to seeing you. May God bless you and may heaven richly smile upon you. We still want you to make sure for our church members, financial concept, um, um, uh, we want you to get into this, um, uh, our, our financial concept we're going to be having. Or go on our website. You'll be able to see um, um, where you can sign up for financial training um, with, our, with our Compass Ministry, excuse me, with Compass Ministries, um, beginning on the May the 9th. Just register, log on, get with um, our administrator, let them know that you're going to be on, online. It's free. Just get online because it's going to help you with some financial concepts. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday.